good morning. Welcome. Welcome to Arrows of Deliverance and Faith Ministries, where our pastor is Pastor Scotty Miller Sr. Welcome. You are welcome at this time to like this. You are welcome to share this. You are welcome to drop your name and comment. You are welcome. This is that time. This is that place that we listen to God, what God is trying to say to his people on this day. So join in. You are welcome. You are welcome. You're welcome. I'm going to read in our hearing this morning, Matthew, the fifth chapter. I'm going to read. I'm going to start reading at the third verse. I'm going to give us a couple, and then I'm going to go ahead and pray. All right? So that's Matthew, the fifth chapter. The third verse reads, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of of heaven blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted blessed are the meek for they shall inherit inherit the earth blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled i'm gonna stop at this one blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy i was speaking to someone this week and they said something under the umbrella of I didn't ask to be born. Well, none of us ask to be born. But if we walk around with that mindset, if we walk around looking at God as if he made some type of mistake or there's some type of issue or there's always some type of circumstance, there's always some type of problem. I'm always dealing with this. I'm always dealing with that. Why me? Why I have to go through this? Why I have to go through that? If we walk around with that type of mindset all the time, I can see how it's difficult to give God thanks. We just ended up a couple days ago uh, celebrating Thanksgiving. And people give thanks. They get together with their family. They eat food. And, and they tell God, thank you. And they look around the table and say, well, I'm thankful of this and I'm thankful of that. But each and every single day, we should be thankful. We should be grateful. Each and every day, we should be telling God, thank you for allowing me to have the opportunity to live. Thank you for the opportunity to even come back and say thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that things are as well as they are. We're supposed to come back to him and praise him and honor him and glorify him and give him what's due his name. He is the I am God. And he is worthy to be praised. I challenge us today. I challenge that we will shift our minds and shift our thinking from what we don't have or if things are not going the way we want them to go. And just bless his name because he is. Because he's our God. Because he uh, uh, gave us life. Because he redeemed our life. Because he forgives us day in and day out. Because he have mercy upon us. We ask him for mercy all the time. Do we give out mercy to others? Blessed are they that have mercy towards others and they shall obtain mercy is what the Bible says. So as we look towards the Lord this morning, let's give him thanks. Let's praise him. Let's glorify him. Yeah, you didn't spend the money that you want to spend on Black Friday. So what? We're giving gifts sometimes to people that don't even deserve gifts. But give God the gift of thanks. Give him the gift of gratitude. Give him the gift of God. I know I don't deserve this, but I thank you anyway. Amen. Amen. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this day. Oh, God, as you asked us to enter your gates with thanksgiving, God, we thank you. We thank you for having a mind to come back and say thank you. We thank you for having a mind to tune in and, and listen to your word. We thank you that we have a mind to pray. We thank you that we have a mind to seek your face. We thank you, Lord, that not only are we seeking your face for something that we want you to do for us, God, but we're thanking you and praising you and seeking your face because you are the I am God. You are our daddy. You are our father. You are our Lord. You are our savior. You are our bishop. You oversee everything we we do you are omnipresent God you're everywhere at the same time you everything that we need God exactly when we need a God for that this morning we say thank you for that this morning we praise your name for that this morning God we say that we are grateful God it could have been us God that you chose Lord Jesus to be homeless it could have been us God that you chose Lord Jesus for us to be outside with no clothes no shoes no food but you saw fit God that we're in our right mind you saw fit God that we have a place to stay you saw fit God to give us food God so how dare we Lord Jesus not say thank you how dare we not bless your name and glorify your name how dare we Lord Jesus ask 
ask you, why don't you make us, God? Oh, God, you are the almighty God. Oh, God, you don't make no mistakes, God. You said in your word, God, everything that you made was good. So this morning, we say thank you for making us. Thank you for creating us. Thank you, Lord, for the thought that you had about us, God, before we were even formed in our mother's womb. Thank you, God. Thank you for who you are in each and every last one of our lives. Thank you for drawing us with that love and kindness. Thank you that we have health. Thank you that we have strength. Thank you, God. We bless your name, God. We bless your name that things are as well as they are. Thank you, God. We glorify you. We honor you, Jesus. Oh, God, we bless your name, God. Forgive us, God. Forgive us for everything that we said, everything that we did, everything that we thought that was not of you, God. If it wasn't glorifying you, God, if it wasn't showing gratefulness to you, God, if it wasn't thanking you, God, forgive us. Have mercy on us, God. Oh, God, cover this service, God, with your precious blood, God. Cover every listener, God every individual that tagged their name every individual that share all of our members god all the visitors god oh god cover us with your precious blood in the name of jesus open up our ears open up our eyes let us see you god let us hear you god let us have an experience with you god that our lives will change and never be the same god oh god as we walk down the path that you lay before us god we bless your name god we ask that you cover our pastor god help him Help him, Lord Jesus, with everything that he's faced with, God, as a pastor, as a husband, as a father, God, as a man in this earth, God. I ask, Lord Jesus, we ask, God, that you cover our pastor from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, inside and out, through and through, God. Bless my pastor, God. Bless his mother, God. Bless his children, God. Bless this church, God, that you placed him over, God. Everything and anything that has anything to do with our pastor, help, Lord. Deliver, Lord, change and set free, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, now we want you to show up and do what you do best, which is be God. Continue to lead us and guide us into all truth. In Jesus' master's name, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, if, I don't know if you're excited yet, but you need to be getting excited. Because God is not obligated to repeat itself. He's not obligated to say anything to us. He did what he wanted to do, which was created us. So it's our job and our opportunity to come back and say, thank you. I'm grateful. I praise your name. I honor you because you don't have to do it. You don't have to bless us, but you do. And because we're blessed, he said, bless are those that seek after righteousness. Bless are those that thirst and hunger for him. Amen. 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 So I'm not going to keep talking up here that you like this. Did you share this? Did you comment? Did you get somebody else involved and say, you know what? Arrows is on and they have a word from the Lord. This is that time you can do it while our pastor is on his way up. And as we always say to our pastor, this is Pastor Scotty Miller Sr. We want you to preach the word, Pastor, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you today, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. What a tremendous privilege it is to be back in the house of worship and to be in the house of praise. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful to God as my wife just stated in prayer. Hallelujah. First, we thank God for my lovely wife. We thank God for her prayers, for her kindness, for her love, and for all that she brings to my life. Hallelujah. In the immutable name of Jesus. But I'm grateful as she stated to just be in the land of the living. Hallelujah. So let our hearts go out today and we want everyone all of our members all of our family and friends we want you to be praying for uh the ruach worship ministries and the passings of apostle dr patricia holiday hallelujah she was a great woman of god and we're praying for their family we're praying for her children we're praying for her husband apostle robert holiday and we want you to know that whatever you need we want you to reach out to us here at hours of deliverance and faith ministries and we will be there to walk alongside you and assist you in this time of bereavement hallelujah certainly i'm grateful to the lord to be in the land of the living as we just stated i'm grateful for life i'm grateful for health i'm grateful for god's strength hallelujah what a privilege it is that God will use such wicked flesh to be his mouthpiece. 
Uh, I don't know if you understand it if you're with me today, but God does not have to use us. The angels cry, what is man? Hallelujah. That thou art mindful of him, that God would visit us and that God would use us for his glory. Certainly, I'm grateful that God is impressed within us. A word that I believe is going to strengthen you right where you are. For those that have been following us, you know that we've been in our series all month long dealing with restoration. And I want us to, as we culminate this message, I want somebody to know on today that God is getting ready to do something supernatural in your life right where you are you need to lay hands on yourself put it in the comment section did you hear what I said I say lay hands on yourself put it in the comment section and say God is getting ready to do something supernatural for me hallelujah I wish I had a believing church today we are living in perilous times people of God and we have to reach toward God like never before we have to hold on to the unchanging hand of God we have to believe what God said in his word now more than ever because our redemption draweth nigh and there's still some things that God wants to do in your life and in mine and I'm ready to receive what God has for us we told you when we started this series that we are in the fourth quarter of the year. Hallelujah. And God wants us to finish strong. We, talk, we told you in the beginning of this message that sometimes we're looking at where things are in our life now. And we're wondering about those things that we believed God for. Those things that we placed at the Lord's feet in the beginning of the year. And we're wondering why they have not transpired and made, been made manifest and materialized in our life yet. Hallelujah. And God told us to tell somebody that oftentimes... If what God said to us has not come to pass in our life, it's not God's fault. Oftentimes, if we're honest, it's our fault. And the reason is because we tend to be out of equilibrium. We told you that means that we are unsteady and that we unprepa are unprepared. You say, Pastor, unprepared and unsteady for what? You're unprepared and unsteady in your walk with God. You're unprepared and you're unsteady in what God wants to do in your life. How am I unsteady, preacher? Well, we are unsteady because we have let go of our prayer life some of us don't even pray as my wife said and we ought to count it indeed a privilege to be able to approach the throne of grace hallelujah that we may attain mercy and find grace to help the word of God says in our time of need and so if we're not seeking God we are in essence unprepared and when we're not seeking God what we tend to do is we shift from what God wants us to do to what God does not want us to do and in essence what happens then is we are now shifting from our strength we're shifting from the strength of God to weakness hallelujah why because we're now walking in the flesh and we are not fulfilling the things of the spirit I'm in the word of God already I'm preaching already hallelujah you have come to Arrows of Deliverance and Faith Ministries, a place specifically designed for you to find strength for your journey. And that is indeed this journey called life. Hallelujah. I want to build your faith today. I want you to be strengthened in your spirit, man. I want this word to get down in your heart. And I want you to converge it from your heart to your mind. Because the word of God lets us know that it is with the mind that we serve the Lord. And it is at the mindset, the mindset, the mindset that the enemy attacks. The Bible calls them the fiery darts of the devil. He will attack your mind. He'll use your negative search of circumstances. He'll use your struggle. He'll use people, places, and things to move you out. Hallelujah. From the place that God has designed for you to be so I want to build your faith today I want to strengthen you today so that you can finish this year strong because God told me that he's going to indeed restore you wondering why things are dry in your life you wondering why contracts are falling off you're wondering why you're ready to quit and throw in the towel you're wondering why your finances seem to have dissipated you're wondering why you're dealing with all the hell that has come against you and God told me to tell somebody it's because you're closer to your milk and honey now more than you have ever been uh, did you hear what I said God told me to tell you that you you're getting ready to walk out of your wilderness out of your spirit of depression out uh, hallelujah of your dry place out uh, hallelujah of lack and limitation you ought not ever be walking around in lack and limitation as a child of God uh, and once again God told me to tell somebody that you're getting ready to walk in your milk and honey hallelujah I wish I had a praying church on today if you pray I preach my series or rather my text this morning it's coming out of Jeremiah chapter number 33 and we're going to read verses 1 through 9 
That's Jeremiah chapter 33. As always, I want you to take notes. I want you to write these down and in your leisure, read them over again. Go back and listen and watch the message so that you can hear the word of God. We told you on Tuesday night that the word of God, many of us, we think it's just the Bible. No, the Bible is biblical instructions before leaving earth. Uh, but you have to listen to the word of God uh, so that the Rima word from God uh, can speak directly to your life. Jeremiah chapter 33 beginning at verse number one the word of God says while Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the guard the Lord gave him this second message this is what the Lord says the Lord who made the earth who formed and established it whose name is the Lord ask me and I will tell you remarkable secrets you do not know about things to come for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. You have torn down the houses of this city and even the king's palace to get materials to strengthen the walls against the siege ramps and swords of the enemy. You expect to fight the Babylonians, but the men of this city are already as good as dead. For I, God says, have determined to destroy them in my terrible anger. I have abandoned them because of all their wickedness. Nevertheless, the time will come, glory to God, when I will heal Jerusalem's wounds and give it prosperity and true peace. I will restore the fortunes of Judah and Israel and rebuild their towns. God says, I will cleanse them from their sins against me and forgive all their sins of rebellion i hope you're hearing what the spirit is saying to the church god says then this city will bring me joy glory and honor before all the nations of the earth the people of the world will see all the good i do for my people and they will tremble with awe at the peace and prosperity i provide for them my thought this morning beloved is coming out of verse number three where God says, ask me. The King James Version says it like this, call to me, God said, call to me and I will answer you and tell you and even show you great and mighty things, things which have been confined and hidden, which you do not know and understand and cannot distinguish. And so my subject this morning, ladies and gentlemen, is he's waiting on you. Would you just put in the comment section, he's waiting on me, make it personal. Father, in Jesus name, we thank you. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you great praise. We thank you, Lord God, for this privilege now to minister. And we ask God that as we humble ourselves in your presence, that you would anoint these feeble lips of clay with the, the anointing that would destroy the yoke of the adversary off of the lives of this your blessed people. God, I pray that you would give me precision of thought, clarity, Lord God, of speech and nibbleness of mind. Oh God, to declare the continuity of your word and your thoughts towards your people. Give us, Lord God, an experience with you today as you seek to restore your people. Hallelujah. Help us all to see, Lord God, your love and your unfathomable riches, Lord God, that you are about to bring into our life. Grace, peace, and joy. And we receive it right now. Throw your weight around, Lord. Be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Once again, my subject this morning, beloved, is he's waiting on you. Ladies and gentlemen, in 1932, the renowned Charles and Grace Fuller were overwhelmed with pressure. Their young son was near death, suffering from pneumonia. The Great Depression had wiped out their financial support. I need you to hear me today. And Charles desperately sought ways to remain solvent. In other words, he wanted to remain able to pay their debts that they had incurred. And so he was forced to sell off his valuable orange groves that he had at that time. He did this because he needed to exhaust his wife's inheritance in order to meet their bills. Now his wife Grace, his wife Grace at the time, she faced major surgery and Charles was then forced from his pastorate. Immediately following all of this, a severe earthquake then struck their home in Southern California. Do your research, you'll find this for yourself. And their financial woes then multiplied. Grace felt that she could stand the strain no longer, and she then cried out to God for help. And she went into her husband's study, and she opened a book that her husband had full of the great 
preacher Charles Spurgeon sermons and she found a message that he had preached 70 years before from this very text in which we have given you today in Jeremiah 33 and verse number three. And she later said after reading the sermon that God lifted her burden so remarkably that when Charles returned from another hard day with the lawyers trying to fix the situation that he was in and trying to find a way to ward off the bankruptcy that he had to file, she was able to reach out and tell her husband, never mind how black things look now. She said, God has assured me that he has great and mighty things in store for us in the future. Things which we can't even imagine now. Now, as time passed, Charles and Grace Fuller, I'm going somewhere with this today. As time passed, Grace and Charles Fuller traced in that moment the faint beginnings of their work to come. An incredible ministry. I need you to research it for yourself. They had an incredible ministry of radio, an incredible ministry of evangelism and education. Not long after Charles would then pen this very verse under his signature and it became their life verse. Ladies and gentlemen, it was A.W. Tozer. He said, and I quote, it is doubtful whether God can bless a man greatly until he has hurt him deeply, end quote. You see, there's going to come a time in your life where you'll wrestle with your flesh. You will wrestle with your flesh and you'll wrestle with the spirit of God. You'll wrestle with God and got what God has called you to do. You'll go back and forth, up and down. It seems like you're in and you're out. Seems like you gain ground only to lose the ground that you gained. In other words, why am I saying all of this? I'm saying this because somebody this morning is wrestling with something and it seems as if you're losing and you're now sitting on your gift and you're focusing on your negative situation when you should be working in the kingdom of God. Uh, the devil has told you that you can't make it and that you will not win. Uh, for somebody, the devil has told you that you will not get up out of that situation that you're in. Your pressures will not change. Shut up, devil. Hallelujah to God. Uh, you've got to shake that off from you and tell the devil that he is a liar. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the devil is a liar this morning. You got to get up from that place. Uh, if you've fallen, God told me to tell somebody, he says to you right now uh, that it's time for you to get back up. Uh, God said to remind you that you are more than a conqueror. Uh, Satan has told somebody this morning that because uh, of some negative choices that you've made in your struggle oh yes you're struggling right now uh, you might not admit it you might not have told anybody in fact uh, only you and God know what you're dealing with uh, it might be that mentality what's going on in your head uh, I don't know what it is but all of us uh, are struggling with something why uh, because the word of God tells us that all have sinned uh, and come short of the glory of God uh, I feel my help now thank you Jesus uh, and so then the, being that we're all struggling with something uh, uh, we cannot listen to the lie of the devil uh, because God said his strength is made perfect where uh, it's made perfect in our weakness uh, but what we tend to do is I already said it uh, we tend uh, to shift from our strength uh, we stop praying we stop fasting we stop going after God uh, and we embrace those things that God does not want us to embrace uh, uh, let me slow down uh, uh, for somebody today, uh, the enemy has told you that the things, there are things in your life uh, that you're never going to receive from God. Uh, he's told you that God won't use you. Uh, well, watch this. Uh, if that would be the case, if that was true, uh, that then disqualifies all of us this morning. Uh, uh, doesn't it? Not, doesn't it? Uh, it disqualifies all of us if well, that would be the case. Uh, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to get up from there. Uh, I'm reminded of Peter who thought the same thing uh, when he denied the Lord three times. Uh, and what we must understand is that his works failed God, uh, but his faith didn't fail God. Uh, ah, his faith, his faith could not fail God uh, because God himself prayed for Peter. Uh, hallelujah to God uh, Peter denied the Lord uh, and Peter felt so bad that he thought his life was over uh, the Bible says he went back uh, did you hear what I said the Bible says he went back uh, to doing what he used to do the familiar and the mundane uh, not realizing that God still had a purpose for him uh, as he does you too uh, uh, his works failed uh, 
but his faith couldn't fail. Uh, the Bible says that Jesus prayed for him, uh, that his faith fell not. Uh, what am I saying to you today? Uh, what I'm saying to you is that regardless to what you've done, uh, that you should not have done. Uh, God says he already knew that, uh, but he already prayed for you. Uh, so you got to get up from where you are uh, and tell the devil that I'm still got the victory. Uh, all I do is win, win, win uh, because I'm walking with God. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you got to have faith in God uh, and you've got to trust him to bring you out uh, in spite of what you're going through. Uh, uh, Jesus told Peter that Satan desired to sift him as weed uh, and he wanted to grind him up. Uh, but thank God, uh, God had him covered. Uh, and he said, Peter, when you're converted, here it is. Uh, he said, I need you to strengthen my brothers. Uh, strengthen your people uh, when you are converted. Uh, uh, in other words, Satan wants to grind somebody up today. Uh, and it seems like all hell, uh, yes it is, all hell uh, has now come against you. Uh, but God sent me out to tell somebody this morning uh, that he's already prayed for you. Uh, and you shall have the victory. Uh, in Mark's gospel, uh, chapter number 16 and verse number 7, uh, when Jesus was rest resurrected, uh, God said, go tell my disciples and Peter. Uh, did you hear what he said? He said, go tell my disciples and Peter. Why? Uh, uh, it was because Peter still had purpose. Uh, he went on to preach the most powerful message ever heard. Uh, we're still preaching what he preached. Uh, on the day of Pentecost in that 3,000 souls, uh, the Bible says we're saved. Uh, I want you to know that you still still have purpose today huh somebody uh, you're listening to me right now uh, and you feel so depressed because of what's going on in your life uh, and you've been sitting on your gift uh, you've not been going after God uh, you've not been praying and seeking God uh, but I just told you you got to get up from there uh, and let the devil know that I still serve a God uh, he's a God of another chance another chance another chance another chance we talked about that uh, you've got to understand that God still loves you uh, God still has a plan for your life uh, and so now as we look at the word of God huh? I want you to notice with me the command that God gives Jeremiah we're still in our series restoration huh? as we culminate and finish it this morning huh? but I want you to notice with me the command that God gives Jeremiah in our text huh? I want you to notice I didn't say the request of even the invitation huh? but the command huh? that God gave him huh? I hope you see it here huh? ah, God commanded Jeremiah to pray huh? He said, Jeremiah, call unto me. Uh, uh, in other words, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Jesus said in Luke's gospel, chapter number 18 and verse number one, uh, that men ought always to pray and not faint. Uh, and that faint means quit. Uh, uh, many today, beloved, uh, are fainting and quitting and giving up. Uh, people everywhere are throwing in the towel on their marriages uh, because of the lack of commitment uh, and the lack of love. Uh, I mean, real love uh, uh, because of what they don't like like the spouses are doing uh, instead of believing God to bring change uh, people are walking away from God uh, because their love for him is growing cold uh, and lawlessness has now become stronger uh, than their commitment to God uh, Jesus says to us in Matthew's gospel chapter 24 and verse number 12 uh, what did he say uh, he said because iniquity shall abound uh, the love of many shall wax cold uh, but he said that he that shall endure to the end uh, I'm going to endure y'all uh, what about you uh, the same shall be saved uh, do you want to be saved today uh, or are you embracing everything in the world uh, are you embracing hallelujah and addicted uh, hallelujah to limitation and the mundane status quo uh, I don't know how you feel about it uh, but I'm going after God huh I want uh, everything that God said belongs to me. Uh, I want the cattle and the thousand hills uh, because they all belong to God. Uh, and God says if I walk up right before him, uh, I can have what I want. Uh, and that goes for you too. Uh, uh, the apostle Paul tells us uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 uh, and verse number 17 uh, to pray without ceasing. Uh, and so then now uh, this is a command from God uh, and it's God. Uh, how uh, that takes the initiative uh, aren't you glad uh, that God takes the initiative to go after you uh, would none of us be saved uh, if God didn't touch us uh, would none of us pray uh, if God didn't give us the mind to pray uh, would none of us fast uh, if God didn't give us the mind to come after him and bring this nasty flesh uh, under subjection uh, 
None of us uh, would be here today uh, if it had not been for Jesus. Uh, I thank God for the Lord. Uh, when he saw my fault, uh, he looked past it uh, and he saw his blood, uh, the blood that he shed on Calvary. Uh, I've already been to the water, uh, been baptized in Jesus' name, uh, filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, evident by speaking in tongues. Uh, I got the real anointing. Uh, I've got the real Holy Ghost on the inside of me. Uh, I thank God. Uh, because if I didn't have it, where would I be? Where would you be? Uh, he says to pray without ceasing. Uh, and so then now, uh, this is the initiative and the command of God. Uh, God says to Jeremiah, call me. Uh, now I must ask you a question today. Uh, let's get into this word. Uh, have you ever had anybody give you a card uh, with their unlisted number on it? Uh, I'm not just talking about any Joe Schmo. Uh, no. Uh, I mean an important person that says, call me. Uh, uh, on one occasion, uh, I need you to get it huh many people have given me their number huh and i mis misplaced it huh and didn't even know what happened to it huh? but if you know somebody huh, who's important who gives you their unlisted number huh, and they say call me huh? ah, ladies and gentlemen that's a great privilege huh? the great the mighty God huh? El Shaddai Adonai huh? the first and the last huh? the Omega huh? hallelujah the Lord of hosts huh, is his name huh? beloved he is the one huh, who says call on me huh? and so this morning he is the one huh, who has given us his privilege number. Uh, did you hear what I said? Uh you've got uh, the privileged number of God uh, in Jeremiah 33 and 3. Uh, there it is. Uh, God says, here's my number uh, and I'm waiting on you. Uh, he says, I want you to call me. Uh, you want me to do some things for you. Uh, you want me to open some doors for you. Uh, you want me to get some things out of your life uh, that the devil brought into your life, uh, but you won't talk to me. Uh, you won't get on your knees. Uh, you won't lay down prostrate uh, and humble yourself. Uh, and God says uh, that I'm waiting on you. Uh, I want you to call me. Uh, God says it's my invitation to you. Uh, I don't know who you are, uh, but God sent me out with this word to tell you uh, as we culminate this message uh, and this series. He wants to restore you, uh, but he's waiting on you. Uh, now, most of, most of us can't pick up the phone. Uh, watch this. Uh, and call a lot of big shots in government. Uh, we can't call big business people uh, like Jeff Bezos. Uh, and Warren Buffett. I want to have lunch with him huh? because he's got what I want. Huh? I need his wisdom, huh? but I can't call him. Huh? Ah, but there's not one of us huh? that cannot contact heaven. Huh? Did you hear what I said? Huh? You might not be able to call the people that you want to call. Huh? Ah, but there's not one of us this morning huh, that can't contact the Lord. Huh? Don't you ever say, huh? I need you to hear me now. Huh? Don't ever say that there's nothing you can't do about what's going on in your life huh? and what's going on around you. Huh? Because you can pray. Huh? And prayer is not only is something you can do, huh? it's something all of us can do. Huh? And because God has asked us to pray huh? or command us to pray uh, ah, because God has invited us to pray uh, because God uh, has commanded us to pray uh, watch this uh, a failure to pray is then sin uh, who y'all didn't like that uh, but it's true anyhow uh, a failure to pray is sin huh? but this invitation this morning huh? and failure to pray huh? is also an insult to God huh? why huh? Uh, because it's also a privilege huh? and so then failure to pray huh? is folly on your part and mine huh? because God gives us an opportunity huh? to do what huh? to commune with him huh? so failure to pray then huh? is a tragedy huh? and we deny ourselves the wonderful privilege huh? to enter into a colossal tragedy. Huh? That's what happens when we don't pray. Huh? We enter into a colossal tragedy in life. Huh? And yet still, huh? we won't pray. Huh? I hope you're getting the message today. Huh? You want to be restored? Huh? God says he's waiting on you. Huh? In Proverbs, uh, chapter number two, beginning at verse number one, uh, the Bible says, my son, uh, listen to the word of God. Uh, that's not gender. That's ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he says, if thou wilt receive my words uh, and hide my commandments with thee, uh, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom uh, and apply thine heart to understanding. Uh, yea, if thou criest, there it is, uh, call unto me. Uh, if thou criest after knowledge uh, and lift up thy voice for understanding. 
hiding uh, if thou seekest her as silver uh, and searchest for her as for hid treasures uh, then shalt thou understand what uh, thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord uh, and find the knowledge of God uh, for the Lord giveth what uh, he giveth wisdom uh, and out of his mouth uh, cometh knowledge and understanding. Uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11. Uh, we all know this text. Uh, it encourages us to know God said. Uh, For I know the plans that I plan towards you. Uh, says the Lord of hosts. Uh, thoughts of peace and not evil. Uh, to give you a future and a hope. Uh, in other words, beloved. Uh, God is in the business of Hashab. Uh, and Hashab is the Hebrew word. Uh, hallelujah for what? Uh, it's the Hebrew word for his planning. Uh, his his thinking and his creating uh, creating what uh, Hashab uh, is God created in each of us uh, I need you to hear this uh, his peace uh, in fact one of the many names of God uh, is the Lord is peace uh, or Jehovah Shalom uh, and that's what needs to be restored uh, in someone's life this morning uh, so why then does his peace uh, this is my question uh, why does his peace uh, seem to be so elusive at times uh, well uh, if we look honestly at ourselves uh, we can often trace the root of calamity uh, in our own lives uh, even to us refusing to recognize uh, recognize what uh, recognize Jesus as the source uh, of our peace uh, who then encompasses our blessing uh, he encompasses our wholeness uh, and he is our completeness uh, like the people of Judah, huh? I'm back in the book now. Uh, we often close our ears to his trumpet call uh, and we determine to walk down our own path. Uh, and it's a path of destruction, y'all. Uh, and the Lord who sees all, uh, what does he do? Uh, he continues to extend his olive branch to us. Uh, God, uh, he wants to give us his peace today uh, as our hope for a better future. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, watch this. Uh, the Hebrew word for future uh, is a harit, uh, which literally means to end. Uh, David confirms that this end uh, is what? Uh, I like this part. Uh, he said it's shalom. Uh, in other words, it's peace. Uh, in Psalms 37 and 37, uh, David said, Mark the perfect man. Uh, and behold the upright uh, for the end a uh, harit uh, of that man is shalom or peace uh, uh, and right in the center of Jeremiah uh, I'm almost done now uh, right in the center of Jeremiah 33 uh, is a passage which prophesies of peace uh, it prophesies of prosperity uh, it prophesies uh, of comfort and hope uh, for the kingdoms of Israel and Judah uh, national restoration uh, universal redemption uh, and the spiritual healing uh, uh, of both the northern and southern kingdoms uh, are the key elements in this text uh, while echoes of God's judgment uh, I need you to hear this uh, on the wicked proceed uh, and follow this message of hope for Israel uh, Jeremiah I need you to listen uh, he spent most of his life uh, warning his people uh, of severe judgment to come uh, if the nation did not repent of their evil uh, that's what I'm talking about today uh, when we come to God in prayer we've got to repent uh, he said if they did not repent of their evil ways uh, and return to the Lord their God uh, he was faithful to his calling uh, yes he was uh, oh yes he was uh, and yet what they have the Jeremiah dealt with uh, he had to endure uh, an onslaught of mocking uh, he had to endure loneliness uh, imprisonment and rejection uh, I know you don't like what you're dealing with today huh but you've got to remain faithful to your calling. Uh, you've got to continue to do what God called you to do. Uh, that's if you believe that God called you. Uh, so many people are quitting. Uh, and I will say and step out on faith. Uh, it's because you don't, re you haven't really been called. Uh, I need you to understand uh, when God has placed his anointing, uh, when God uh, has put his super on your natural, uh, I don't care what's going on in your life. Uh, you cannot, you will not. Uh, you will not throw in the towel. Uh, why? Uh, because the seed remaineth in you uh, and God is still going to pull at you uh, he'll wake you up at one o'clock in the morning uh, he does it to me all the time uh, get up Scotty I want to talk to you uh, I want to go to sleep uh, but I got to listen to God uh, sometimes I don't get back in the bed uh, till after five in the morning uh, and I'm tired all day long uh, but I'd rather be tired all day long uh, than not spend time with God uh, somebody you need to get up uh, and go before God uh, because God wants to spend time with you. 
Hallelujah. Ah, Jeremiah was faithful to his call uh, and he had to endure a whole lot. Uh, I need you to understand this morning uh, that despite Jeremiah's divinely inspired messages, uh, he was subjected to unbelievable ridicule uh, and obliged to witness his rebellions, uh, nation's refusal to heed his warning. Uh, I'm giving somebody a warning today. Uh, they didn't want to listen to him uh, before being defeated, uh, before being dispersed. Uh, and then what happened? Uh, they were sold into slavery. Uh, and God says, uh, call to me uh, and I will answer you. Uh, I will tell you great and mighty things uh, which you do not know. Uh, hallelujah to God. Uh, it was a little message of hope, y'all, uh, hidden in the middle of his prophetic writings. Uh, and these uh, encouraging words from God uh, point to a time beyond the coming tribulation. Uh, as outlined uh, in Daniel's 70 week prophecy uh, you've got to read it in your own time study it for yourself uh, it looks beyond the time of Jacob's trouble uh, to a day when the new covenant uh, which God promised to Israel uh, will be fully and finally ratified uh, and implemented in the promised kingdom rule of Christ uh, so as often happens in scripture uh, Jeremiah's prophetic disclosure uh, was accompanied by an important time of prayer there it is uh, and is accompanied uh, by important petition and pleading for the people of God. Uh, ah, this crying man, uh, they called him the weeping prophet. Uh, he remembered God's deeds. Uh, he recalled Israel's escape from Egypt, uh, their entry into the land flowing with milk and honey. Uh, there it is again. Uh, ah, he remembered their victory over many foes. Uh, and he remembered God's grace uh, and God's mercy towards them. Uh, despite their apostasy, uh, hallelujah. Uh, ah, despite their abominable sin uh, and their outrageous idolatry uh, sound like the world today don't it uh, oh yes it does uh, God said call to me and I will answer you uh, and this beloved uh, was God's words of encouragement uh, to this weary warrior uh, God said, uh, call to me now, uh, and I will tell you great and mighty things, uh, things which you do not know. Uh, call to me, God said, uh, right in the middle of his prayer, uh, the Lord told his servant uh, that following the destruction of Jerusalem, uh, the, the dispersion of his people uh, due to their sin, uh, that there was hope still uh, because he purposed in his heart uh, to gather his scattered nation uh, and bless them mightily. Uh, he told Jeremiah, uh, of great uh, and mighty things that he would do for his people uh, if they were simply called on him. Hallelujah. God promised to bring Israel back. God promised to bring Israel back to their land. I hope you're hearing what the spirit is saying to the church. He promised to restore their property and repopulate the nation with joyful men and singing women. He promised to send a descendant of David to be their Messiah and he is to be called the Lord my righteousness. God said call to me and I will answer you. Call to me and I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. God said for thus saith the Lord uh, the God of Israel concerning the houses of this city and the houses of the kings of Judah which have been pulled down to fortify uh, against the siege mounds and the sword. Uh, they come to fight with the Chaldeans, uh, but only to fill their places with the dead bodies of men, uh, whom I will slay in my anger and my fury. All those whose wickedness I have hidden my face from this city. Ladies and gentlemen, all of us have done some things. We've said some things that God had to hide his face from. And God now says, behold, I will bring it health and healing if we'll call on God. If we'll lay down prostrate and go after God and pray, God says, I will heal them and reveal to them the abundance of peace and truth. And I will cause the captives of Judah and the captive of Israel to return. And I will rebuild those places as at the first. God goes on to say, are you hearing what the Lord has given me for you today? He says, I will cleanse them from all their iniquity. That's enough to shout right there. Blessed is the man whose sins are not imputed unto him. God says, I'm going to cleanse you from iniquity by which they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all their iniquities by which they have sinned and by which they have transgressed against me. We have to acknowledge what we have said and done, ladies and gentlemen, and repent before the Lord. And so when you read Jeremiah 33 verses 4 and 5, it's as if we jumped into another passage of scripture 
one minute we are given exciting promises of answered prayers and great things ahead the next minute a bunch of people die and God is furious read the text what is happening in this text by the time we get to verse 6 it looks like we're back on track so then my question then becomes were verses 4 and 5 misplaced and the answer is no what is happening in this text is that God is showing Jeremiah that judgment must come first and redemption second did you hear what I said judgment must come first and then redemption second now we would all love to jump to verses 6 through 17 and read about healing abundance and peace and the truth of God's rebuilding and him pardoning sin the people's joy and their praises and God's goodness his prosperity and his mercy we would all say those are the great and mighty things of Jeremiah 33 and 3 that we all want to see so why the doom and gloom in verses 4 and 5 I need you to listen well the truth is that God cannot perform any of these things until he has first dealt with sin whatever your issue is today let's go before God and give it to him people cannot heal when they are consistently wounding their souls with sin people cannot find peace and truth when they are ignoring the truth people cannot be pardoned of sin when they have not repented and forsaken their sin people would not be restored if we don't acknowledge what we are doing and where we are and give it to God God wants to show us all great and mighty things and often we pray and we ask God to heal rebuild restore and show mercy just to see the opposite take place we cry out to God to answer us and he shows us more hurt and disappointment no doubt watch this this is how Jeremiah felt while he was in prison the Bible says the word of the Lord came to him a second time where was he he was locked up why do bad things happen to good people why do we have to go through what we go through we have to go through them because God is developing us God is showing us who he really is this is where Jeremiah was the truth is God had to and he has to deal with the sin before he can perform those good things in verses 6 through 17 but watch this I encourage you when the sin is dealt with then God begins to do those great and mighty things that he promised in verse 3 I want you to be encouraged today beloved and know that God has a plan for your life do you remember what God promised Jeremiah in verse 3 look at it again he said I will show you somebody I need you to just make that personal God is getting ready to show me hallelujah things that are great and mighty in your life God said I'm gonna show you things which you do not know ladies and gentlemen we don't always see what God is doing behind the scenes yet he invites us to call on to him and trust them anyway he promises to show us those things that are great and mighty I don't want you to understand I don't want you rather to miss that the key and the power of this text hallelujah is in the source and it's found in verses 15 and 16 Jesus is the answer he was the answer for Israel in this text he was the answer for Jeremiah and he is also the answer for all of our lives today he will come to execute judgment and righteousness and then bring deliverance this is what Jeremiah prophesied about and he said they will call him the righteous branch would you hold on to that branch today so that God can bless you he's waiting on you now go after him father in Jesus name we thank you we bless you we thank you for your word Lord I pray for these your blessed people Lord that your word was easily entreated and received help your people God, God to understand that you're not just inviting us you're not just calling us but you are commanding us now that if we want to see that which you have predestined for us we have to call upon you hallelujah we have to lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily beset us and we ask God for your help we ask for your assistance we ask for the paraclete the Holy Ghost that you placed within us Lord God to now have rule over us give us Lord God the spiritual mindset to Lord be militant in our mentality to come against ourselves and not each other to embrace your word to hold on to your word by faith oh God understanding that when we do that you say you will show us great and mighty things and you will rebuild you will restore you would heal you will bring prosperity and most importantly you will bring peace we thank you Lord and we believe by faith that it's done in Jesus mighty name beloved there might be someone today that you need the peace of God hallelujah you can reach us here at the church we're waiting for you 
because you have to call. You have to call. Did you hear it? There it is again. You've got to call. And once you call, our prayer intercessors will be there waiting for you to help you touch heaven. Somebody just needs to touch someone that's touching God. Hallelujah. As the woman with the issue of blood did. She didn't touch Jesus physically, but she touched what was touching him. And we're waiting on you. We want to walk, walk alongside you. There might be someone that wants to join this church. I want you to understand that we would love to have you. We want you to partner with us and help us build the kingdom of God. And we would love to have you. And we will help you walk with the Lord in a greater way. And you will to help others receive strength for their life and for their journey. Hallelujah. I want to continue to give someone the opportunity to give. Your gifts are honored and they are much appreciated. And it's because of your gifts and your partnering with us that we're able to further the kingdom of God and serve this community and those that are hurting and that are in need. I'm going to leave you with this, beloved. In Genesis chapter number 1, beginning at verse 27 and 28, the Bible said that God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. This is what he said to man. He said, replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish, over the sea, and over the fowl, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Why did I give you that? Because the Holy Ghost said, give it to you to understand and remember that God made you a dominionaire. God made you to have dominion over everything that God placed. Hallelujah. All you have to do is humble yourself. All we have to do is humble ourselves and know that God is waiting on us so that he can show us the true dominion that are in the lives of his people. Second Chronicles 7, chapter, chapter number 7, verses 13 and 14. If my people hallelujah which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray seek my face God says turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and I will hear their land beloved go after God today and know that God is waiting on you I want to remind everyone to come back Tuesday night for more strength for your journey join us in our Bible class there is another word from the Lord hallelujah lady Miller will be teaching and she is going to bring the word in a mighty way hallelujah i just felt that in my spirit hallelujah i want you to meet us tuesday night and we are going to have a good time in the lord hallelujah i want you to remember to come back on thursday morning at 7 a.m bright and early with my lovely wife first lady as she leads us to the throne of grace we're going after god we're calling on god hallelujah as he told the prophet jeremiah in Jesus mighty name now brethren I commend you to God and to the word of his grace hallelujah which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance amongst them that are sanctified hallelujah in Jesus name and always remember in the fourth quarter of this year let your faith be bigger than your fear let your faith be bigger than your fear and go after God call on him hallelujah because God says I'm gonna show you great and mighty things if you would just call on God and always know that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper and every tongue that rises up against you in judgment shall be condemned and as we always say say it with me I am you are because he is in Jesus name see you Tuesday night